Welcome back valued viewers, it's another Saturday, it's unfortunately rainy and nasty but we should be okay. Today we're going to start with getting the engine all up and running again. So here is my layer filter that I've kind of bodged together with the AFM there. I'm going to kind of put them there. Just fits in about there which is nice. Couldn't manage to get a cold air feed, there's just no room. So at some point I'll modify the prob probably the under tray down there and have a cold feed coming out from the side down there. I don't know if you can kind of see that where any roll bar is. Have a cold feed pipe coming up there from the front of the bumper wiggle its way up and then come into here but anyway it's not that important at the moment so i'm going to have it something like that just about sort of fits uh just hope the bonnet will shut should do uh, i've got this pipe here that we need to modify to make it all fit slightly the wrong size we're going to have to do a bit of tinkering in terms of diameter but I'm used to doing that kind of stuff and we need to have where is the little monkey where is he? There he is. That is the, what we believe, the temperature sensor for uh, the inlet air. So we'll make a hole in there, pop him in there, and then uh, we'll have that sensor in there. So let's have a little go, shall we? Welcome back. All done. Changed my mind halfway through, but uh, you can see what I've done is I'm now routed, come off the uh, plenum, now go south down there. I'm going to pick up, hopefully, Relatively cold air from there. It's going to go through the radiator first, so it's going to get heated a bit. But let's give it a go and see how it goes. We've got spacing to the chassis. We've got spacing to this pipe here, so if we move around a bit, it should be okay. One thing I didn't think of is we the bonnet might hit the sensor here. So um, what I do is I put a bit of tape on there just to check if we're going to get any interference, and we'll see what happens when we run it. Obviously, the engine will move about in the engine bay as a relation to the engine. So just to remind you what we've done. The whole EGR system, exhaust gas recirculation system is gone. Uh, the uh, doodah, woodah, uh, the fuel tank and the catch can uh, system here is all gone. And you can see it's cleaned it all up nicely down here. The original intake system is all gone. It's really positively nerdy. And uh, you can see there's a lovely clean arch around here now, which is great. Uh, so it looks really cool, chuffed with that. And just replaced with uh, just a simple here, doodah there. Any math down there since I've obviously chopped the loom about a bit but it's nothing nothing you know major that, that'll affect it so that now is there is the overall shot of the engine mate which I think looks great um, I'm actually kind of starting to like this little engine now something about it it's just uh, it's just a funky engine engine not very really powerful but I'm always thinking about get a tubular, tubular manifold here stainless steel would look quite cool right a stainless steel manifold are a pain in the butt when they've got turbos attached to them but this I think it will just look cool, it won't really make it go any faster, but maybe even the whole uh, exhaust system if I can get the money. I don't know, we'll see. Still don't really know what I'm doing. I've tidied up the looms a bit, but what they'll do is I'll put them in proper channels when I can be bothered. But, uh, so they'll get completely out of the way, and I think that's a great little looking engine. Clean it up all properly. That's great. Um, we need to see if it works, right? Oh, and I've uh, obviously rerouted all of the... Because obviously I'm going to take all the lines out of the engines, you've got holes in the engine everywhere, so I've rerouted everything to what I think should be okay. I'm expecting uh, an engine warning light, but I'm used to that in my cars because I remove bits that you're not supposed to remove, but they're fine, it's not a problem. Uh, right, do I have the key? Uh, I'm assuming the battery's still charged up. Okay, baby, let's see your rock and roll. Let's come on and go. Yeah! Okay, no warning light at the moment, but we'll, one will come on. Uh, it's, it's all 90s and above. Have uh, engine warning lights if the EGR goes, the solenoid goes, but like I said, it's fine. You get it through an MOT, no problem. Ta da! Alright, so, pretty shocked with that, guys. Having a lot of fun with this car, I must admit. Even the bodywork was relatively painless compared to the Nissan. The Nissan was horrendous. Uh, speaking of bodywork, we're on to bodywork next. Paintwork. We're going to start on the paintwork, making it relatively decent and not terrible. Stand by. Welcome back. So I've just started on the door. You can see, there is where we did the repair. It's not perfect, but I'd say it's pretty damn good. Uh, you know, as far as I care. Uh, that side hasn't done it. You can see we've still got a different colour, but. We'll crack onto that, but I figured we might as well do the whole car as well. So, what we're going to do here, if you see 
because this type of old red doesn't get lacquered or I think it's two pack paint but it doesn't get lacquered if it's red for reasons I don't understand so you can see after 22 years it's gone matte and dull you know look at it, it almost looks like just matte paint uh, something to do with the sun and UV doing something to the top of the paint I don't really understand cracking out or something so you can see I've just had a quick polish and this is just a quick fuzz over of this side of the boot lid with grade one and then grade two I haven't even done the final polish yet but you can just see that's super shiny and the red starting to come back whereas over here it's pink and it's still a bit matte and stuff like that so what we do is we go with our stage one I'm actually using scratch remover which is completely the wrong stuff but I think it will still do for the stage one then I'm going to go stage two then stage three and this will come back like a new car trust me so uh, yeah let me get the rear done and then we'll worry about the door afterwards. Welcome back, it's Sunday, I've done two layers of polish, the final one's still to go on, but already to be honest, it's looking not far off new car to me, super chuffed with it. The back, the bumper was basically pink before, you know it's red, it's not quite super shiny, but after the final coat I think that'll be just as good as the boot lid. Or not, still not perfect. There's a bit more paint going on it, but it's looking a lot better. Bonnet looks nice, bumper looks nice. Ta da! After one more polish and a bit of a cloth, I'm going to absolutely chuff with that. Uh, it's pretty much ready to go now, all taxed and legal and ready to go. Uh, I'm going to drop it down, torque the uh, wheel bolts up. Uh, just got to unblock the drains for the roof, but I'll do that another day. Otherwise, value tumors, that is project finish. Chuff with that, so to reminder, we had it in, crashed, uh, we kind of damaged underneath. Uh, we did the sills on either side, we did the arches on either side at the rear, cleared up the whole arch well and underneath the car, we painted it, cleared up the front arches, painted it, cleared up all the pipes around the engine bay, all underneath. Simplify the engine bay, move stuff about. Rejig the panels at the front so they fit now. Repaired the door, or it still needs finishing off. Got it legal, and that's it. Um, we'll go and, and hopefully enjoy it somewhere. I hope you enjoyed that and see you later.